everyone, and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Crawl Space Program 1.8.1. It's been a little while since I released a video in this series, and that is because of my computer upgrade. I have now got a much more powerful computer, and I decided to focus on using it, testing it out on the more intense installs of Kerbal Space Program and the bigger rockets like Monument first. And I have only now gotten down to RP2000, which uh, is actually a very lightweight thing. It is very low on the memory usage, very low in terms of the complexity of the rocket since we're early on in the career. Uh, so yeah, it's not very taxing to the computer and doesn't really test out my new capabilities. Uh, hopefully everything will be quite smooth thanks to that, of course. But here we are with what I've decided to call the Neon Rocket for now. Uh, that's this uh, red, black booster, purple, black rocket, well, red up top, uh, to match my logo, though actually, uh, Where's my logo? There we go. Um, so yeah, we are going to use this. This was used for the lunar orbit mission, the crewed lunar orbit mission previously. And this time we are going to launch a lunar lander over to the moon, but we're gonna launch it uncrewed and then crew will eventually rendezvous with it. So taking a look, uh, this is our lander with uh, Lynx cabin, uh, not with the shell on top of it. And I've decided to go with the purple foil. This was inspired by the James Webb Space Telescope. Uh, so instead of having gold foil, we have the purplish foil that I think the James Webb Space Telescope had for insulation uh, to match with our purple rocket and purple, purple logo, I guess. And of course, we still have the gold foil there because that's baked into the Lynx itself. And we have a probe control core right there uh, so that we can control it. And of course, the, the communication units and power. I don't know if it's enough power. Uh, maybe I should scale it up a little bit. Just for safety's sake. Now I don't know whether we can actually get this over to the moon uh, with this rocket as it is. Um, with enough fuel to land and take off again. It's a little bit tight right now. Uh, we are at the pad limit. Uh, the limit is 800 tons. So we can't make this any bigger. And we'll see. It's about 15 tons the lander is. But it has to obviously get into orbit around uh, the moon. And we'll see whether the delta v's work out for that. So, that being the thing, let us uh, make sure to build this. It's going to take 509 days. It's got some science on it, but no nothing too complicated, just a thermometer and barometer. I use the stock ones for that. I decided to unlock those because it's so hard to click the, the CubeSat ones. And we also need to bring in the recovered Lynx S3. Uh, yep, yeah, save and continue. Uh, it looks like our staging is wrong, though. We need to bring in the Lynx S3 and add a rocket to it so that it can eventually rendezvous. So let's edit that. We should put in some more build points so that we don't take 509 days to build each of these things. So uh, taking a look at it, I saved a Lynx Neon here. Uh, we'll need some other things. I've got the heat shield here too. So they'll basically be identical. Hopefully the parachutes are repacked properly. Uh, the, uh, the heat shield will be replaced. And we need the supplies here. It, it still has the same supplies. Maybe I should just put the, the parachutes over again because this is worrisome. Okay, so that should be good. We need the arrow cap. and the launch escape system. Loading a little bit higher than usual. Now I made a custom Lynx launch escape system, but that's not priced for, for uh, RP2000 yet, and I haven't brought it in here. Well, I think I want more food, water, and oxygen than that. I think we'll just send two people. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. And this will take 634 days at the current build speed, so that's also not acceptable. Alright, well, let's save this 3-2 and save edits. Alright, upgrade points. Uh, we already have, uh, well, just four available. Let's that down a bit. I haven't picked up the contract yet. 
And I don't want to pick up the moon landing contract yet. It's risky. Because it's only giving us two years and the failure is nine million. Uh, what we're going to do is we'll take another suborbital, not suborbital, lunar orbital contract. That'll give us some, some money. Not as much as we would like, but you know, at least it'll be something. But we'll only pick it up right before we launch. Which could be in a thousand days at this rate. Let's put some more money in. We have no choice, really. Okay, eight, eight build points per second now. Well, uh, 750 days, two years. And a bit. I guess we'll take that. So it'll be uh, 2021 by the time we get this going here. And of course, we'll wait till both of them are built before we launch the first one. Otherwise, the boil-off will be too severe on the lunar lander. The lunar lander is fueled by methane and oxygen. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Somebody was uh, wondering about what to use for a lunar lander engine. And I'll show you. Actually, we have some in the Shearstrut engine pack already. So it is a methane oxygen engine in this case. It is the SE-1004. Uh, it is pressure fed. So we have a pressure fed tank here. This wasted tank is a pressure fed tank. But these outboard ones are not. So they just feed into that tank and that does the pressure feeding. Uh, and yeah, it has 39.3 kilonewtons, but it can throttle down to 30% um, of that. 30% of that, and it has an ISP of 343.9, which is pretty good. No better than the alternative hypergolic engine, which is, and you could pick it, it's the SE-1003A, actually. The 1003, actually both of them can throttle down, so either one will be fine. Uh, both can throttle to one-third of their total thrust, so you'll have to measure it out right. 318 seconds of vacuum ISP with NMH and Mon3. Uh, this one uh, has a little bit more thrust and slightly more ISP. It's a little bit heavier and I believe I made it more reliable if you're using test flight. So that's one benefit. You can see uh, with test light it has 98% uh, to 99.5% reliability whereas this one has 97 to 99%. So that's one of the distinguishing factors. This one also has a longer rated burn time. So yeah, those are the benefits of the A version as opposed to the original. But otherwise, you can use MHM on 3. It also has an Aerozine and UDMH configuration, but I did not alter the thrust or the ISP for either of those. So you get those for free. Oh, uh, it says 20%. Uh, um, I don't think that's 20% of that thrust. So I don't know. It means 20% minimum throttle. I don't know where it's getting that from because that does not look like 20% of that. Anyway, I don't know. Oh, and uh, this A version also has more ignitions. So that sort of comes with more reliability anyway. Uh, there is no A version of the 1004 yet. That's higher up in the tech tree. So we there is an A version that exists, but we don't have it yet. Okay, so that is what we're using there. So that's why I recommend that as your lunar lander engine. Okay. We are rolling out the moon lander here. That, okay. Oh, oh, let's pick up the contract now. Human orbital. Totally ignoring the fact that they're Kerbals. We also have a science data from the surface of the moon to do. So if we land, we'll at least get that done as well. But that's sort of trivial in terms of the payout. There is a fly by the moon, around the moon, and suborbital spaceflight on Earth contract with some tour. There's a lot of tourists. One, two, three, four, five of them. They're all basically asking for compatible things, so that's a thought. That's that's probably adding up to a decent amount of money there. Finally, but five of them, we'd have to take two trips. You know, technically, okay, antenna, docking port, and can generate power. 
Supporting five Kerbals, have a pilot on the station. Technically, we will have all that once the lander and the and the Lynx orbital vehicle are together, right? They will have a total cabin capacity of six. One of them will be a pilot. Uh, probably, well, I don't know if we want to have two of them be a pilot, but one of them will be a pilot. Uh, and this gives us a gener generous amount of time. That's eight Kerbals and two pilots. This one, maybe we can do that. Okay. All right, rolling out. So there are MLI layers on the fuel tanks of this moon lander launch. And this one will not be crewed. Well, it's wiggling a bit. Hold on. Let me auto strut to root part here. Just in case. Can we launch the neon rocket in daylight? No. <laughs> Okay, here we go. SAS on, Thrall is up. It's wiggling a bit. That's not what we want to do first. Alright. Ignition. And launch. So the core has SE 2150 engines from the Shusha engine pack, and then the boosters have SE 2200 engines. Okay, booster set. Okay, core is out, separation, and ignition, and fairing set. Might as well do it while the thrust weight ratio is at its lowest, which it currently is. And let's get these antennae out. Alright, making orbit here. Shut down 219 by 205, and we've got 3756 meters per second left. That means, uh, depending on how boil off shapes up here, and we do seem to have some boil off, it doesn't, it, this tank does not have 100% MLI layers, uh, so it does have a little bit, but maybe we can help the lander get into orbit around the moon with this. That was what I was hoping for. I don't know how well it'll work out. I put as many MLI layers as I could while staying below the 800 ton limit. So we'll see. Uh, once again, it seems like we could have probably kept burning, but we'll wait in orbit. I'm sure the pad needs to be reconditioned and I'll take a while. So we can probably just finish up with this. It doesn't say anything about the pad reconditioning there. Uh, two days. Well, that's before we would get there. So we should probably start rolling out the crude portion sooner. A minor mid-course adjustment might be advisable. Keeping it equatorial will make the later rendezvous easier. Okay, let's wait in orbit and see what kind of loss we get. Oh, we should set this to hibernate in warp. Well, boil off does not seem to be too bad so far. The remaining delta V in this stage won't be enough to get the lander into a low, low orbit, so it'll probably have to use some of its own fuel to finish up. On the bright side, it is a reusable lander. Uh, it's only one stage, so we could send fuel over, and that would be good since sending a new cabin is expensive, right? Yep, very expensive these crude spacecraft. Now well, let's sell the fuel down quickly. Not really settling very well, is it? Okay, now it's got it. All right, ignition. Take it. We're basically over to the United States, so I don't anticipate any comm issues. Okay, 1.5 left there. Okay, that's good enough for a periapsis. Let's correct the inclination with a mid-course adjustment. And we'll just use RCS for that. Okay, looks good to me. Let's head out to make course adjustments. 
603 meters per second. It's this boil off, but it's not happening too fast. And that is a bit of boil off of methane, I think. That I'd rather not see at all, because that's the lander's fuel. I'll keep an eye on how much RCS fuel we have down there, but should be able to cover it. Wish I had stronger RCS ports down there, though. I guess the MMHM on 3 up there is just the RCS fuel here. We sure packed a lot. I wanted to reduce that. Okay, yeah, a surprising amount of Delta V in the RCS right now. But it's really low powered RCS. We're getting there a little bit quick. I'll take the 50 kilometers. And getting into a low orbit is going to take more than we have in the stage. One way or another, the lander is going to have to get into a low orbit. Otherwise, it can't land. So the lander might have to spend 273. Now, whether we can still make a landing like that, I don't know. That will depend on how the boil off is ultimately. So we're looking at uh, a day and eight hours until we roll out the crude mission. Can I do that from here? Yes, I can. Okay, so we are rolling out the crude mission, four days and 11 hours for that. Our periapsis is as expected. We have lots of comms around here, so that doesn't make us immune to comm issues. Okay, neon rocket stage and the Lynx lander. It seems okay, thanks to that delta relay and also this triple cube launch relay. Okay, now it's getting stable finally. That took like a minute. All right, ignition. Well, I certainly don't have patience to wait for the RCS here. Okay, double checking, staging. All right, separation and ignition. Oh, you have 4,900 meters per second here. I dumped some of the supplies in here because we don't need like the full 14 days or whatever. So we have a little bit more Delta V here than I was expecting. I normally aim for 4,800. That's 2,600 for the landing and 2,200 for the liftoff. Now mind you, our thrust to weight ratio is very low, even for a moon lander, at the stage time of 16 minutes. So we'll have to be careful about the landing too. It's one reason why we have the high estimate. You can do a moon landing with much less than that. Uh, it depends on your stage timing. The quicker thing is, and the deeper it throttles, the less you need. Purple tank goes with purple plume for the methane on oxygen. Okay, well, I don't want to get below 50 kilometers. We'll leave it here for now. And come back to it. During time warp, the hibernate in warp can keep it recharged. We do have boil off, so that's what we're interested in, partly. 14 tons around the moon right now. So, let's go and launch the Lynx S-3-2 and see if we can make this work. Okay, time to put the Kerbals in. We've got Jeb here, who apparently only has one star. Uh, Bill has none. Bob has one. Valentin has one. Milden has two and Lodbin has five. How does Lodbin have five? I don't even remember. Uh, it seems like we should definitely send Jeb to get a few more stars. And uh, maybe on the next go around when we actually fulfill the contract, we'll send Valentin. Remember, we haven't picked up the crude lunar landing contract right now because I was too afraid of the penalty. So we'll hold off on that and Val will do that one. I think we'll just go with Milden here as our second pilot, and so we'll have two pilots, and let's go with that.
You can carry a third person, either an engineer or a scientist, later on. Still just nighttime here. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. A bit sideways. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Purple and reddish plume matching the purple and reddish rocket here. Actually, there's a little bit of bluish because of the, the hydrogen and oxygen engines on the core. I think earlier on it looked more reddish. Now it's getting more purple blue. Okay, booster set. Okay, the core is out. Separation and ignition. And launch escape system jettison. Boom. Frisky. There are a lot of contracts for rescuing Kerbals around the moon. We should pick some of those up at some point. Once our moon operations are highly reliable, hopefully. Okay, shut down. 197 by 180. And we have 3,800 meters per second here. But I don't think this tank has as much insulation on it as the one that launched a lunar lander. So there is that. In fact, our boil off is measurably higher. So I don't think it's tagging along. Okay, we'll leave it at that with a four degree difference. Now we're off. Okay, let's go. Uh oh, ignition failure on one of the engines. Let's quickly see if we can reset that. It has multiple ignitions. Okay, we're fine. Multiple ignitions for the win here. But we're very late now. Let me turn off the RCS on the spacecraft. Okay, I think we went too far there. Actually, let's try and get a correction done earlier rather than later. So that we can use this stage still. So, it'll be, there'll be a radial thing because it took us longer. Well, the situation isn't quite as good as it was before, but the question is whether in 20 hours we're going to have 270 meters per second in this stage to do this burn. Let's see. Also, if the power is going to hold out, I think it will. We've got the hibernate and warp thing. We probably shouldn't, though. Maybe I'll play it without that. See how it goes. I think that'll only leave us with 10 hours, though. Let's see, where did we have the solar panels? Can we just release those panels? This side, let's see, this in fairing. Okay, now we are recharging legitimately. But the boil off is happening. I don't know what the effect is of doing this correction earlier, much earlier. Since it's mostly radial burn, that's generally not a good idea, but maybe we can change that up a bit. Okay, it looks like this is doable. We should just put those MLI layers on everything, really. And ignition. Well, now I'll just do the rest with the RCS. Okay. Well, we have a decent periapsis. We have the descending node at the periapsis. I think that's all we can ask for at this point. Um, so, that's all set. Let's separate. Let's separate. Okay. And get the other two solar panels out. We have 2,000 meters per second here, which should be enough. Let's check on our supplies, though. Yep, yeah, uh, 16 days. It's fine. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI and approaching the moon. So for our orbital station contract, we just have to dock and 
we should fulfill that. And we'll probably attempt the landing next time, depending on what Delta V we have in the lander, of course. Okay, so 743 meters per second, and then we'll have an intercept point just after one orbit, and relative speed 86, so no problems there. The shadows cast by these engines is a little bit weird. It only reads the, the outer bit of it, not the inside. Interesting. Okay, selling fuel down, and ignition. Oh, ignition failure. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, it's a uh, yellow ignition failure though. What does yellow mean? Okay, let me try. I just want to see what the stats are. I don't think these engines gimbal. They don't have a gimbal on them. I think its stats are fine though. So this is not going to be an ideal capture burn right now. So uh, we've had two engine issues. I really should get test flight in here so it actually destroys the engines <laughs> every now and again. This test light is way too way too soft on me. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see about that closest approach distance. Okay, well four kilometers will have to be good enough. Uh, it occurs to me we have to activate these top ones, otherwise we're not going to be able to dock. Oh, right. There was a problem with that, wasn't there? Shoot. Um, some cross-feeding issue. Well, cross-feed is enabled there. Enable here? Yeah, no. We're not getting those RCS, so we'll have to reactivate the one the uh, RCS on the pod again for the docking. Uh, I'll wait until we actually are docking. Okay, ignition. Okay, well, we're sort of floating on by. Okay, this RCS is laughably weak, but anyway. Let's just kill rotation here. All right, it looks like we're configured for a docking. All right. Still got 1,243 meters per second left to return home. We might give the lander a boost down to a slightly lower orbit. All right, docking worked. Our CS off. And maintain stability for 10 seconds. All right, we fulfilled the orbital station around the moon contract, and we'll do the landing next time. So I'll see about bringing it down. We'll shut off the lander engine for now. It's only got 500 meters per second to push the lander around. So this service module is not like the service module of uh, Apollo or anything. You can see, obviously, it's tiny. Uh, it's meant to push this pod around, not the combination. But uh, yeah. We'll deal with that next time and try to land on the moon, I think. So, I mean, let me double check. Uh, boil off uh, may, may have happened. Uh, we've lost some. It's a little bit tough to tell how much we have. We'll have Jeb go in there, uh, separate off, and then double check how much we have left and see if it's enough at that point. But for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.